Hey guys, the name's Jasper, and welcome to part 2 analysis. Pag-usapan natin itong um, episode na to. Basically, another good episode. It's more of an, again, extension of the first uh, of the first episode that we natin yesterday. Um, I was actually expecting like 90% na nasa ibang mundo na tayo, pero nope. It's tama yung sabi ni... Isa sa mga viewers natin may sinabi na this episode, sabi natin ni Mario Lourdes na this episode is going to be more on about paalam naman Fidel Perniclay. Okay. Um, pero yeah, everything went so fast. Hindi <laughs> ko napansin na nasa ending na pala tayo when she already t- teleported there. But anyways, here's what I can say. Um, it's a fine episode, pero I cherish all of the stuff here between Clay and um, Fidel mismo. Um, I don't know what else I can say about their conversation here. Pero the most heartbreaking scene para sa akin in this conversation is this one line from Fidel mismo na once na nag-teleport si Clay once na nag-teleport si Clay ang first words na lumabas kay Fidel ay Clay? Hinarap niya agad si Clay mismo, di ba? And wow, that's sa lahat ng mga performance ni David in the entire series, I think this is the most powerful one. Kasi I'm again, I'm the guy na, you know, the smallest gestures can mean the biggest meanings. And him simply looking for Clay after she teleported back into our world really speaks a lot. And I got nothing else to say about that. But that was perfectly executed in David's part. You don't need any other lines of regret or any other lines of of sadness. Just just the name Kalai coming out from David's lips. Wow, it's it's really powerful. Now I wonder how the Clydale is going to work out in the El Filibusterismo story in which we will come back to dito sa abangan. Too bad hindi sa nagalikan, pero I think, yeah, <laughs> that's fine kung hindi sa nagalikan. Maybe we're going to see that in El Filibusarismo. But anyways, um, we did get to see a very, a very sad Padre Damaso. Um, ito lang masasabi ko sa kanya. Buti nga sa kanya. Um, but it's understandable kung bakit malungkot, di ba? Pero I see Padre Damaso more of a of a demonio than a person, so I don't care about him. Padre Damaso, you deserve that. Um, is a cantarantado. All right. Okay, Padre Salvi naman. Is a din tantarantado, of course. Every time na merong letter na lumalabas sa kanya, na may nawawala siyang letter, it's always good news for him and bad news for us. I'm pretty sure na si Padre Salvi ay if ever pinanganak siya sa mundo natin, siya yung taong ngingiti tuwing may bagong email siya na natatanggap. So, this can only mean one thing. Kung saan kumbento pupunta si Mara Clara, doon din pupunta si Padre Salvi. And gaya ng sabi ko, mas gugustuhin ko si Padre Salvi pumunta sa mundo ni Clara at bumisita sa IKEA, bumisita sa SM, kesa sa punta niya mismo si Mara Clara. That's all that I can say about this one. I also love this scene right here kung saan, kung kailang pares sa si Clay. Nakita din natin pares sa si Mara Clara. By the way guys, before I forget, um, uh, while well, I was taking some screenshots dito, I love this framing right here. I love the framing that they did here kasi I said na Mara Clara looks like the Virgin Mary. Like, literal na st- statua. Not only from her wardrobe, pero 
um, even from her name, Deba, and stuff like that. This frame right here was very intelligent, was very smart, because usually whenever, I mean, if you're a cat, if you're a Catholic, Deba, na ka, if you're trying to look as, at a statue of the Virgin Mary, we look at from this angle, exactly like this framing, Deba. Lahing ganyan. Kasi usually yung mga statwa, matatangkad, matataas. And we are always looking from from uh, from this from this perspective, from this angle. And that was actually intelligent for the for the filmmakers to do this. Even, even kung sino mo cinematographer dito. Kasi they know, they are completely aware that Julian San Jose or Maria Clara's character looks exactly like the Virgin Mary here. Diba? And um, um, they know that they had this, um, they had the opportunity to exactly um, express what they think about Maria Clara's look um, in this scene by simply um, placing the, the camera in a lower angle and to show this exact frame. But at least it feels like we are looking at the Virgin Mary itself. And, you know, given that we have the virgin word there, this will lead into next episode of her getting um, um, getting that thing by, by Padre Sabi, kung nang ni Padre Sabi mismo. And that really breaks me more. Diba? That really breaks me more kasi basically this scene right here will all lead into Maria Clara's insane downfall in which I believe in this week we might able to see the continuation of episode one when Maria Clara was on the tower and maybe trying to do something that um that is very difficult for her. But you know Pasinko when I was taking um a screenshot and yeah I'm just let's go back to the to the video again. And I get the Dinati Palace and see Christos no Mebara. It's basically um, uh, a filmmaking technique in where we're in where we're seeing the the characters are now leaving their previous worlds, literally and figuratively, and now they're on. Uh, they are now into a new journey that they have. Christos no Mebara. Um. Is now journeying towards the life of Simon. Mana Clara is now on her journey towards the life of being a nun. And Clay towards a life into being Clay version 2.0 kung saan nambulat na siya sa katotohanan, di ba? And basically into her real world. So I wonder how all of that is going to play out in El Filibusterismo. Um... I'm just happy that she's back. Um, I got nothing else to say about this scene. There's not a lot um, to, you know, analyze. But from a surface level, she's back. She's back into this world. She's happy to see her mom. Some things that were confirmed. Wala pa 24 hours bago siya um, makabalik dito. Um, turns out, nag-away pala sila bago. <laughs> Bago mag teleport si Clyde, di ko na matandaan yun. So, um, thank you for that flashback. But, I wonder how this version of Clyde is going to treat her family, diba? How are the lessons of Noli Mitangari is going to help her with, with her choices, especially with the issue that Narcisa has with her boyfriend or husband. So I'm really curious to see that. With that being said, um, I think we're going to get one more episode na nandito sila sa mundo na to, and then we'll get to see Clyde go back into the No Limit, no Limit world through El Filibusterismo. I think next episode, that's where we're going to get yung montage yata na Binabasa niya mismo yung libro ng El Filibusterismo. Which leads us to here. So we are now seeing Narcisa at least trying to defy herself. 
laban kay sa kanyang asawa o kanyang boyfriend. Now we got to see this thing, which is something that we need to be, we need to prepare for. It's an eventuality, but now it's going to happen in this uh, next episode. Man, I just hope na may dumating na superhero dito para patayin si Padre Salvi. Pero, you know, I think we're not going to get that. I'm not sure if this was specifically in the books or maybe it was just implied na nangyari ngayon ganito. Um, that's just sad. Ngayon may sinabi dito si Clay. May sinabi siya dito. Napapahing, napapahingan ko lang. Uh, pahingan ko lang. Ba't pa nang walang sound? Bakit walang sound, bro? Hindi mangyari. Oh, si Fidel, wala. Si, okay. si Maria Clara, ano, ganun na lang yun? Kasi hindi verified yan. Madami pwede mo. Hanggang kailan pa ako maniniwala hindi ko sinasayang oras ko sa'yo? Tsaka hindi naman totoo yung epilog na yan. Sabi-sabi lang naman ng mga marites yan. Hindi verified. Okay, epilog. Okay, epilog is again, um, Epilogue is something that happened after the main story. Diba? We got the prologue, which is the basically the introduction. Then we got the epilogue. Okay. So basically, from this context, sa epilogue, wala si Fidel. Okay? Okay, I'm assuming na may na mention about kay Maria Clara about sa epilogue about sa ginawa ni Padre Salvi. Um, clearly, wala si Fidel sa epilogue kasi, I mean, he doesn't exist in the books anyways. So, there's that. Okay, wala. One no mention of Ibarra in the epilogue. Okay, which will make her read El Filibusterismo. Maybe after reading the epilogue, siguro kakasabi ni si Professor Torres mismo, di ba? Pero, I wonder if she's going to read, at least try to, just try to look for Fidel's name in the entirety of the Nolimitangre story. And I wanted to know whether Fidel's name is exactly in that book. Diba? Because if there's no mention of Fidel's name in the Nolimitangre book, in all of those chapters, then that could only mean she might, exp- um, she might think na Fidel isn't one of those fictional characters na Noli Maitangre mismo. And now in which she will try to question who exactly is Fidel. Is Fidel a person from the books? Is Fidel someone that Jose Rizla really wrote? Or is Fidel a Clay that stayed in the world of Noli Maitangre? So the, st- the theory and the jury is still up about Fidel's true identity. But that's my analysis in this episode. What do you guys think? See you guys around tomorrow. And yeah, leave those comments in. And thank you for watching. Thank you, you guys. Goodbye and take care.